What's up everybody, this is Matt Brown with another IoT hacking video. Today we are going to discuss an alternative to the tried and true JTagulator. Now this is still an awesome tool when you are trying to find JTAG or serial wire debug on an unknown system that you're trying to reverse engineer. But this device has been discontinued, which has left a lot of newer hardware hackers looking for an alternative. So I found a project that piqued my interest recently called Blue Tag. It is a Raspberry Pi Pico based system that does some of the things that the JTagulator does. We're gonna talk about its limitations and uh, the pros that come with it. So first, let's go over to our workbench and see what I have for our demonstration today. So here on the desk on the left side, we have an STM32 development board and we're kind of cheating here. I, this is not an unknown system. I know that the serial wire debug port is right over here with uh, six wires. Now, only two of those wires are the serial wire debug signals that we care about, the, the clock and then the IO pins. Um, but we have connected up a couple more of them so that we can kind of kick the wheels on the software to make sure that it can enumerate through a bunch of unknown pins. And one of those pin, pins is the ground pin, which I have specifically connected up to one of the ground pins on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So to load the blue tag software onto this Raspberry Pi Pico, what we're gonna do is we're going to hold down the boot select button, and then we're going to plug in our micro USB, which is connected to our computer. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so here we can see in my Linux systems uh, D message logs that it has recognized a removable device. So what the Raspberry Pi Pico does as an easy way to load new firmware onto it, it will show up as a flash drive. Now, I'm running Arch Linux. I do not uh, automatically mount flash drives to my system uh, for security reasons. I just don't like doing that. So what we have to do is we have to mount this disk that we see here. It is SDC1. Let's go ahead and mount that. And I have a little folder here that we can mount this drive. And then uh, you can see here, I already have the firmware file for blue tag, but let's just go ahead and look at where I got that firmware file from. So you can see here, I will have links in the description of this video for this project on GitHub, but all I've done is gone to the release. And then this is the file right here that I've downloaded. And so to flash this file, what we're going to do is simply copy the firmware file onto the flash drive that has showed up on our machine. And so after doing that, we can actually watch in, in here in our dmessage log, and we can see that the device then kind of reconnects as this device called Blue Tag. So now it is actually running the firmware for this uh, this blue tag, blue tag software. So now what we can do is, uh, we can unmount this just to start with. And then what this blue tag software is going to do much like the JTagulator is it's going to allow us to connect using a term, a terminal emulator over a serial port to the device. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, uh, we can actually see here in the logs uh, which serial device it shows up as. And so we can use PicoCom and just connect to it. And then if I hit enter, we get this nice menu. And you'll notice that a, a lot of the menu options, if you have used the JTagulator, are exactly the same. They've, they, they've taken a lot of the, you know, the little options and they make them exactly the same as the, J, the JTagulator. If you're used to using the JTagulator, you should be familiar with these menu options. Um, and they say here very clearly that they've, 
you know, been inspired by the JTagulator to make this project. So what we are going to do today is use this S option. We're going to perform an SWD pinout scan. So we're going to scan through the different pins that we have connected. So I have them connected up to the Raspberry Pi Pico on GPIO pins 0 through 4. So we're going to scan five channels. So I'm going to hit the S key and then it's going to ask me for how many channels I have hooked up. Now again, it's going to assume that I'm starting with pin zero and working my way down. And so I'm going to say five and it's going to tell me that this is a slow scan, but I've, um, it shouldn't take too long. But what this is doing is it's trying all the different types of pins and then it's trying to do the simplest uh, you know, kind of JTAG command where it just gets the ID of the chip that it is debugging with this protocol. And so here you can see that it has returned a result successfully. It has detected the pinout and it's telling us that on channel one, we have the clock signal. And then on channel two, we have the IO signal. And so it's identifying the device. It says, you know, ARM is the manufacturer, sure. Um, lists a part number, things like that. Um, but this is really what we're, we're interested out of this. We, we want to know what the pinout of the SWD signal is on our unknown board. In this case, it's not unknown and we can actually verify it with the data sheet. So, we can come over here and we can look at my STM32 development board and we can see that right here on the board is where I am connected up to the serial wire debug interface and we can see that the pins that I'm interested in are uh, SWD clock is on pin 2 and SWD IO is on pin 4. So when we go and we map those over here on the desk, we can see that those actually do line up when we cross all my, all my wires correctly. So we will briefly take a look at that. So uh, let's start with the clock signal at pin two. So pin two is over here. It is the red wire. And then I trace that wire over here. And then that is connected to channel one which if we go ahead and go back to our screen, back to our program output, we will see that the clock signal is in fact on channel one. Now we're going to check the other signal. And so we'll go back to our desk. So the other signal, the, the IO signal, is on pin four, which is my yellow wire. I trace my yellow wire over here. It is zero, one, two, which is what we expected. So this was a cool win that this uh, GitHub project with not too many stars, like definitely go check this out and give them some love, uh, is able to do that task that the JTagulator is also able to do. Just with a simple Raspberry Pi Pico, I'm sure, I'm sure lots of people have these devices sitting around their workbench that you can really easily enumerate, JTag, and serial wire debug. But there is a catch. So this can only do as is, it can only do target voltages of 3.3 volts. If the target system is running, you know, 1.8, 2.5, 5 volts, some, some different voltage, then you're going to need some external hardware to level shift and to convert the voltage to the target system's voltage when you're testing. Um, there is an interesting uh, other project that I found that I want to show on my screen here real quick. So this one has a, a, a lot more stars on this GitHub project. So I may check this one out in the future, but this is an Arduino based system for the most part. Uh, they do have like a standard Raspberry Pi option, but uh, 
we'll, we'll, we'll see what that looks like. Um, but this is a cool toolkit that we can use uh, if our target system is 3.3 volts, then you can use this in place of the J-tagulator without any problem. So I want to thank you for watching this video. Uh, please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. That really helps me out and uh, tells me what kind of content you would like me to continue doing. Thank you and have a good day.